Hello everyone and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah and thanks for joining me today for a tarot tag. It's been a while since I've been on camera, it's been a while since I've done a tarot tag, um, but I've been thinking about doing some kind of getting to know you video for a little while here and so I decided to do this uh, get to know tarot tubers A to Z. Um, this tag is not new. It was put out by Simon of the Hermit's Cave um, some time ago, I think last year, um, maybe even two years ago. I'm not really sure. I'll link to the um, playlist that he has for this so you can watch other people's responses. Um, but it is uh, 26 prompts, one for each uh, letter of the alphabet. And um, we will just get get through it. Um, as I was thinking about the my answers to these prompts, I did want to change a few, so I will talk about those as we get to them. Um, but let's start with the first one. A is for age. I am in my mid-40s. Um, I don't like to uh, say my exact birthday or birth year on the internet for privacy reasons, but um, yeah, I'm in my mid-40s. B is favorite book. And that, um, I think for a lot of people, is very difficult. Um, my favorite tarot book, at least, that I've read so far is Tarot Wisdom by Rachel Pollock. I recommend it to anyone who wants to just get started with tarot um, and wants to know a little bit about tarot history but not become like a tarot scholar. Um, I think it's a great blend of, you know, a little bit of tarot history to give you some background and then some great uh, reading techniques. And she does walk you through all the cards. so. Um, but I think this is more open-ended of a prompt, and so I will give you my favorite, one of my favorite books, which is Ursula Le Guin's The Left Hand of Darkness. Um, this is a very famous kind of classic science fiction book at this point. It won lots of awards when it came out, and rightfully so. It's um, an interesting premise, um, and it explores a lot of themes. I think it's known um, for the fact that the main characters can change their sex, so um, they're kind of uh, a neutral um, or, or asexual most of the time, and then they kind of come into heat, like we see wild animals, uh, certain wild animals come into heat, and at that point they can change their gender um, and become either male or female for that breeding season, essentially. Um, and therefore one person can be the mother of some children and the father of others. So it's a very interesting premise, and the gender thing is, is fully um, explored, but that's not the only reason I like this book. I really like it for um, all of the kind of uh, Buddhist um, sentiments in the book um, and what she has to say about the value of uh, fortune telling. There are for fortune tellers in this book as well um, and kind of knowledge and wisdom and how we apply those things, uh, how we use our intuition. I think that's actually, to me anyway, it's a little bit more interesting theme that comes out of this book, but it's ex excellently well written. It's, um, you know, it's very engaging. There is like a plot to it. It's not just a lot of philosophical stuff. So, um, so highly recommend Left Hand of Darkness if you haven't read it. Uh, C is for career, the career you wanted to be when you were a kid and what it actually is now. Um, when I was a kid, and even when I went off to college and did my undergrad, I really didn't know what career I wanted. I didn't want to have to have one, basically. Um, <laughs> But, uh, so it was hard for me to choose. I had a lot of conflicting and, and varied interests, none of which seemed to be very um, commercially viable, really. Like, I enjoyed dance, I liked playing music, I did for a short time think I might become a professional classical musician, um, which is extremely difficult to do. It's very competitive and there's, you know, there's not a lot of uh, leeway to earn a, a real living unless you're you know, very like at the top, world top of your game there. Um, so that was, yeah, that was tough. I do remember taking some aptitude tests in middle and high school to find out, you know, what are you naturally good at? What kind of careers might best suit your personality? And I always got teacher or nurse. Um, and I didn't really want to be either of those things. Although I was interested in science, and as a kid, I was definitely the kid that would like see a dead animal on the side of the road and want to go poke it with a stick to be like, ooh, what's in there? That's fascinating. How does this thing work? You know, um, I, I, I remember in high school biology class, you know, I like dissected my frog with my partner. And then there was a team 
at our lab table that was like, didn't want to do theirs. And so I was like, do you want me to dissect your frog for you too? <laughs> so I guess I could have gone into like nursing or medicine or something like that. But again, you know, that many years of school, that much debt, um, and just the, the knowing the stress level of medical professionals, I kind of knew even early on that that wasn't going to be for me. Um, so what I do now, I'm a librarian, and it's actually kind of teaching adjacent, which I really like. So I've always enjoyed learning and teaching, um, but I never wanted to be a full-time teacher with the full responsibility of having to come up with lesson plans and grading and all of that. Um, being a librarian, I get to help people find information. I get to assist with their educational process, um, but I'm not responsible in the same way that a, a teacher or professor would be. So to me, it's the best, best of both worlds. I get to do something that I enjoy and uh, help people in that way, but uh, without a lot of the kind of downsides of it. So I'm really glad that I eventually figured out that I wanted to be a librarian and get to be one. Uh, D is for dream, and I, I guess um, this could be interpreted in a number of different ways, um, but I, I wanted to interpret it as talking about dreaming. So I dream a lot. Um, I do remember my dreams fairly well. I, I don't always, but usually once or twice a week I'll at least wake up with some fragment. Um, if I have a notebook nearby and I can get it out, I'll write it down in a great detail. Um, and I don't really do dream analysis. A lot of times I think that my dreams are fairly obvious as to what they were about or, you know, what my uh, psyche or my subconscious was working on. Um, sometimes they're just very strange and they're very entertaining. They're funny. Um, they're bizarre. And sometimes people from my distant past that I haven't talked to in a long time will pop up in my dreams, and that's always interesting. So I like to be able to remember my dreams. I can lucid dream sometimes, so if a dream starts to turn a little nightmarish or things aren't going my way, um, often I can either wake myself up or I can, in the dream, I can kind of decide that I don't like what's happening and I can change it, um, which other people have told me is unique or interesting uh, to be able to do. So I don't know, take that for what it is. I've always been able to do that since I was a little kid. I could kind of turn off nightmares or, or get out of them in some way, um, which is nice to be able to do. Let's see, uh, E is essential item. And this is hard for me to narrow down. Um, I don't tend to carry a ton of stuff with me if I'm just going out the house briefly or if I'm going to work. You know, you got your standard, like your wallet, your keys, your um, your phone or whatever. Um, so I didn't want to just have those. Those are obviously essential items, but they're not really personal. I think everybody has to have some form of identification, some way to get in and out of their house and their car. You know, that's not really that interesting. Um, so it's hard for me because it's changed. Um I, it used to be knitting, and it still is in a lot of cases. If we're going out to dinner, if we're going out to hang out with friends, I'll generally take my knitting with me, especially if I'm working on a project. Um, right now I am working on some socks for gift giving. Um, but over the past year, I've also been journaling every day, and I don't knit every day necessarily. So it's, it's kind of a toss up between the knitting and the, and the journal. Um, you guys have seen this. If you've watched my lives, I share excerpts from this sometimes. So, um, yeah, knitting or journal. Um, and it may, it might just depend on the day when we went on vacation. I took both. Um, obviously I wanted to have them both with me. So those are, those are both essential items for me. Um, let's see, favorite is F, and it's favorite RWS deck, or RWS inspired, I assume. Um, I will show a new favorite that has come about this year. This is the Maraloon Tarot, and I've talked it about I've talked about it on my channel. I actually made a whole video of a this for that and why this deck replaced a bunch of others in my collection. Um, part of the reason is that it's not strictly RWS. It's not um, a clone of every single one of Pamela Coleman Smith's cards. For example, this Ten of Cups is very pippish. It doesn't show the family um, and the rainbow, but it still has the rainbow element to it, so it calls back to the RWS. This one is more RWS, this Three of Wands. Um, this Two of Cups, you know, again, the, the body postures, the poses and things aren't necessarily a straight clone, but it is, it's very much in that vein of illustrated 
and a lot of the cards um, harken back to it but this has some um, you know, kind of nature-inspired things. I love that we're in different locations around the world here. Um, I love the diversity of the people that are in this. And I think the art style is beautiful. It's watercolor and it's just very pretty. Um, and I think it's it hues well to the RWS where it where it uh, where that's a strength. And then it diverges from the RWS where um, you get problematic cards like this Ten of Swords, for example. There's no body here. There's no dead person with Ten Swords. It's just Ten Swords stuck in the ground. You still get the sunrise. And you get a sense of, like, turbulence or, you know, maybe a difficult situation. Um, but you also get the sense of release and relief with these birds flying through the sky. So um, I think there's some great choices here for those difficult cards, like the Ten of Swords, the Three of Swords. Um, and some others in here. I love this High Priestess. Like, she is a portal. Um, she's not just sitting in front of a portal. She is the portal. Yeah, it's, it's some really cool choices in this deck. So this would be uh, my new favorite RWS. And again, that's the Mara Loon Tarot. It's available on Make Playing Cards. Um, next question is G, gold or silver, and I tend to wear silver jewelry. Um, my wedding ring, uh, wedding jewelry is in a silver color, um, and I wear this all the time. Uh, a lot of my jewelry is, has um, silver on it, um, but I have been appreciating gold more. Um, I inherited some gold jewelry a while back, and um, I, liked, I like to wear it, so I do mix it up to some degree. Um, in terms of, if we're talking about tarot, we're talking about decks, I actually don't like metallic edged decks at all, so I would say neither for that. Um, H is height. My height is five feet, five and a half inches. Um, the last time I went to the doctor, they actually measured me at five six, so I don't know if I was just have better posture or something, or <laughs> if I actually did manage to grow like a tiny amount in the last 15 years, that seems unlikely, but uh, who knows. Um, I is for ideal day, and uh, I think that starts with um, a warm waking up slowly, um, a warm beverage with my partner, um, sitting in the living room and petting the dog while we have coffee or tea, um, maybe doing a little knitting, um, and then doing something more active. So um, whether that's yard work or um, going for a nice long walk with the dog. Um, something like that, and then having a really nice meal, um, either a homemade meal or going out to a nice restaurant, um, and, you know, getting time to do the things that are important to me, like doing creative projects, um, or uh, working, uh, meditating. I have been meditating every day, so still keeping those components that um, kind of refill my cup. Um, that would be my ideal day. The next prompt I struggle with, um, it's J for funniest joke. And I don't, I'm not a good joke teller. Um, I am I am witty and I'll talk about witty banter in a bit. Um, but like in terms of like set up punchline kind of thing, I usually, you know, spoil it or get it out of order or don't say it well or forget part of it halfway through or something like that. I, even telling a funny anecdote I struggle with. So uh, instead, I will tell you about a couple of comedians that I really like. Um, so I really like Joe Lysett. I think he's hilarious. Um, and he likes to do really funny things with other people, um, kind of banter, um, or like getting funny revenge on people, not, not causing harm in any way, but sort of having these bizarre conversations that turn around on themselves with strangers, um, especially strangers that are kind of trying to hassle him and, and turning things on their head. So I appreciate his brand of humor. I, in general, I really appreciate any kind of British, um, uh, dry British humor is really good. I've also recently come across a comedian named, uh, Clara Oshansky. They are an American, um, comedian and you can find them on Instagram. They have quite a following. Um, so I'll put their name, uh, below here. Um, but, uh, they talk about things like social anxiety, um, they talk about dating, they talk about um, kind of queer humor, um, so I, I appreciate their perspective as well. 
and uh, find them find them again very deadpan very dry kind of delivery so that's that's my cup of tea uh k is for kid uh or kids no thank you um l is living arrangements and i'm going to combine l with what used to be r as well i'll i'll talk about r in a minute um but l living arrangements so this covers living arrangements and my um relationship status, um, which is that I'm in a monogamous marriage with someone that I've been in monogamous marriage with for over 20 years now. We live in rural Vermont, um, which is a state in New England in the U.S. Um, we're up near Canada, and so it's very cold. And in fact, I am recording this on a day um, when my library is closed because we're having a snow day. So um, it's beautiful up here. I love living here. We live on a, a small kind of homesteaders plot where we have a small garden and we do keep sheep. So um, I live uh, with animals. Um, we also have a dog, as I mentioned. And um, my mother lives essentially across the driveway from us. So she has her own building that she lives in, but uh, she lives here on the farm with us. M is for Marseille deck, and again, I would um, interpret this as favorite Marseille, which is another hard decision to make, but the, the deck I pulled out is kind of blends modern and traditional styles. So this is called the Spanish Tarot, um, and it's originally published by Fournier. You can still get a version of this, so it's still in print. And this is a, um, a vintage version from the 80s or late 70s, I think. And it is, you know, hues to the traditional Marseille layout and um, kind of uh, woodblock style of art, but it has these intensely bright colors. I love the colors that they chose for the pips here, as well as all the costumes. Um, and you can see in the pips, there's a lot more colors than you would get in a traditional Marseille where you would only get two or three colors. You hear you get five, six or seven colors. Um, on all of the cards, and I I enjoy reading it for that reason. I also really like the facial expressions here. Um, the faces are sort of open and inquisitive and sometimes a little bit skeptical looking or like they're laughing or winking back at you. Um, and so it's a fun it's a fun thing to lay out a bunch of these cards and have the have the faces all kind of looking at each other. Um, and it can be quite humorous, um, but also quite spot on. So it's a great deck for that reason. N is for nicknames. Um, and I didn't have a ton of nicknames growing up. Um, I did, I was called by an abbreviated version of my surname um, at one point because there were so many people named Sarah in my generation in my school. And I think in homeroom one time we had like six Sarahs out of 25 kids or something. So there were a lot of us. So eventually we started calling each other by our last names, especially when I was in band, because um, we had a bunch of Sarah's in band. Um, but that is not really my nickname. My mom used to call me Sarah Anna Banana when I was a little kid sometimes. Um, that one wasn't used frequently because it's a little bit long, but I came up with a nickname for myself. It was more of a stage name. Um, so I used to put on little plays and performances for my grandparents, who were my after-school program, essentially. And uh, my stage name for them uh, was Alice I was the famous, magnificent, wonderful Alice So I guess that's my, my nickname. Nobody calls me that anymore, and I'm okay with that. Um, but there you go. Um, o. O is for Oracle, and I wanted to feature a favorite Oracle that I don't use um, because it's sort of a gag, but this is the uh, Edward Gorey um, Oracle, and um, it comes in this little box, and it comes with this little booklet. Um, you can still get this. This particular one is a collector's version, um, and it's actually signed by Edward Gorey. Um, but this is called the Fantod Pack, and um, it is laminated, so it's very shiny, and it's very simple. Um, it features Edward Gorey's artwork, of course, and he made this um, as a Jack Skellington, anyone? Um, he made this as a, as a deck, um, so this is not just uh, art that was co-opted. Um, he designed this and drew these pictures. And I love the items. 
Um, it does remind me of Lenormand very much so, and I think was possibly intended to be a send up of Lenormand. I'm just going to flip to a random page and read you um, what the booklet has for, it has a list of keywords for each card. So for the bundle, um, the significant keywords are Wednesday, a tedious illness, inadequate drainage, a broken engagement, a train accident, malaise, false friends, hangnails, misconduct, aphasia, regrets, disappointments, and fluctuation. So um, there is no way to get a positive reading with this deck because all of the uh, keywords given are negative, <laughs> um, or neutral to negative, I would say. And um, I absolutely love it. It is hilarious. Uh, it really sends up the idea of having like dictionary definitions or keywords for cards that always mean the same thing. It, it really like pokes a hole in that and points out the problem with that if you were to read this this way. So I, I truly appreciate Mr. Gorey's sense of humor um, and I love his art style. I always have, um, I have a bunch of his books too. So that's it. The Fantod Pack is my oracle. Um, P is for passion, or what are you passionate about? Um, I feel like my passion is waning, and not in a bad way. Um, I used to be very kind of pushy and forthright with my opinions, and I can still be that way. Um, if you watch my videos, and especially my reviews, I still have a lot of opinions about a lot of things. Um, but I feel like I'm mellowing a bit as I get a little bit older, and I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, but what am I passionate about? I'm passionate about um, studying Buddhism right now. Um, it's 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 very hard and it's also very rewarding. And I'm really glad that I've taken steps on the spiritual past, path, path to do this. Um, I'm passionate about education. I feel strongly that that is um, something that's very much lacking in our country right now and our culture. And that if we had better education, um, it would help a lot of the world's problems right now. Um, so I guess that's something else I'm passionate about. So the next prompt is Q for quote, and I will just share a quote that I wrote down from a recent book I read. Um, the book is A Minor Chorus by the author is Billy Ray Belcourt. And um, I'll talk more about that in my wrap up video at the end of December. Um, but uh, the quote is on page 56 of the copy that I have, and it says, those around me treated joy like a vocation, a task yielding material consequences they felt they were owed. Um, that's very much about materialism and attachment and some things that have been on my mind lately. So um, that resonated with me and I wrote it down. So I'm changing the next prompt. Um, R was originally for relationship status, but I covered that in living arrangements. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit more about religion. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm a Buddhist. Um, specifically at this point in my my studies and my path, um, a Mahayana Buddhist, and that's sort of a general um, a general term would be like, you know, uh, Protestant Protestant Christian or something like that, um, and then. Uh, within Mahayana Buddhism, there are, there are sects and there are different approaches. Um, I'm still exploring those and trying to figure out if I'm going to continue with the current group I've been studying with, or if I'm going to um, switch tracks and uh, look at something else like Zen Buddhism or something like that. So, um, but for now, I've been studying with a, a Tibetan group um, from a Tibetan lineage, and uh, the idea is that I would progress on to the Vajrayana path at some point if I continue with them. So um, we'll see what happens. But in the meantime, um, Buddhism has been giving me a lot. It's it's really a self-help kind of religion. And I guess from the 40,000 foot view, if you look at all religions, maybe that's what they're trying to do or what they purport to do, which is to help you to be a better person, live a better life. Um, but I, f I really feel the commercialization of a lot of faiths heavily and um, the appropriation of a lot of faiths heavily. And I feel like Buddhism is has been less subject to that, perhaps, it has gotten less watered down or influenced by um, capitalism and consumerism. And that's one of the things that really appeals to me about it. So um, again, your mileage may vary. Um, I appreciate, uh, you know, that Buddhism is also really teaching me to respect other people's beliefs 
more than I have. I've been very um, skeptical of religious people because of my upbringing and um, uh, very uninterested in having conversations about uh, religion and philosophy with people. And that's starting to change and I'm starting to see the value in it. So there you go. Um, S is for season, and I've seen people talk about either what season they're in or what season is their favorite. Um, I'm kind of in both right now. It's December when I'm recording this, and it's um, snowing. It's actually, uh, we're having a snow day today. I love snow. I love the cold. Um, I love the cold because I don't like to be overheated. I would prefer to put on more clothes than try to take off a bunch of clothes. <laughs> um, and I am wearing something that I made out of wool. I love wool. I love knitting. So I really enjoy winter. Um, I also enjoy fall quite a bit. It's beautiful up here uh, in the, the northeast of the United States. We get beautiful fall color with the foliage changing. Um, and, you know, there's all the, the activities and the treats and things that you get around fall and into winter that are seasonal that I like. So, you know, apple dishes, apple pie, um, pumpkin pie. I'm not really in a pumpkin spice person, um, unless it's actually actual pumpkin spices and not weird flavorings. Um, but I do love pumpkin pie. I like, you know, the, the traditional set menu of foods that we eat around this time of year. And I love being able to drink hot tea and, you know, cozy up with my dog and all those things. Tea is for tarot, of course, and the prompt is first and last. So, um, fortunately, I can show you my first ever tarot deck. It's not this sp specific copy, but it would have been one very similar to this. And this is the Albano Weight Tarot. It is an RWS recolored um, version that was done by Frank Albano in the late 60s. And he was also um, really a tarot entrepreneur. So he did the first giant tarot deck. You did the first mini deck. Um, and this was the deck that my mother got when she was a hippie in the 60s and eventually passed to me and I got to use it for a number of years before giving it back to her. So um, this particular copy actually comes from another relative who passed away a couple of years ago and I treasure it um, for, for multiple reasons now, um, both because it was my first tarot deck and also because it belonged to them. So it's a treasured keepsake for that reason. And then my uh, last or most recent acquisition is this um, called The Light in the Mist. And this was something that a friend pointed out. Um, you'll see down here it's subtitled A Tarot Puzzle Tale. And again, I'll give you more of a review or talk to you more about this at the end of December. But this is a tarot game. Um, it's a complete tarot deck and you can read with it. But it's also an adventure game, um, which is really cool. So the puzzles kind of help you learn about the meanings of the cards or the, the situational aspects of the cards and how they can go together to tell a story. That's my understanding. I don't know a ton about this because I do actually want to play the game and I don't want spoilers. So... Um, uh, but it's an interesting concept. Um, tarot as a game, you know, tarot started as a game. It started as a game similar to bridge or something like spades, which is a trick-taking game. So back in the 1500s, 1400s, when it was, was originally developed, that's what it was. Um, and it wasn't until later that it got all of this esoteric stuff kind of stuck onto it and became uh, more of a you know, fortune telling or self-help tool that we find it today. Um, so I've always been interested in tarot as a game and that's one of the reasons I got this. I also got it because my friend got a copy and you can play, um, you know, long distance or over um, video chat if you want, if, if both people have a copy of the deck. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, you is for upset. Uh, what upsets you most? And I think that has to be greed. Um, I, it's the main problem that I see in our society and across the world today. Um, it leads to bad behavior of all kinds. Um, and really if, you know, not to like summarize the world's problems to, um, in, in too simplified a way, but if we could give up greed, we could fix a lot of things, I feel. Um, but with everybody looking out for their self-interests, we're not, we're not, able to overcome uh, to, to overcome that and to help each other um, and to solve problems like global warming that affect us all because powerful people are just worried about their bottom line and they don't want to give that up. Not to get too heavy, but that's what it is. Um, <laughs> so the next prompt is V, video. Um, I think 
Simon originally had this as a vlog, but I don't really vlog. I don't do like day in the life stuff. Um, so I'll change it to video. Uh, which are you most proud of and which is your most popular? So the one that I'm most proud of uh, to date is my weight versus Crowley history and legacy video. Um, it stirred up some controversy in the comments, which I've just kind of left there. I'm, I'm not going to like argue with anybody. Um, but I was proud of it because it took me forever to do. It really, I had to like sit and force myself to do some research. I didn't really want to read lots of material on people that I disagree with, but at the same time, I felt it was important to talk about their legacy because the RWS and the Thoth decks or systems or whatever you want to call them are so, um, still so popular today and still used as reference points. And I feel like a lot of us um, take more recent material and haven't tied it back to the belief systems of these two men. And that's problematic because you're you're building um, some kind of spiritual practice or um, self-help tool on something that you're not, you don't even know what it is. And their intentions for what tarot should be and how you should use tarot were very, very different and often in contrast to how we want to use it today. So I think just understanding that is really important if you want to study um, tarot from their perspectives or from perspectives of teachers that build on those systems. Um, in terms of my most, most popular video by a mile, it is um, the one called uh, Tour of My Study and Tarot Collection. It came out about two years ago at the end of 2020. Um, the hashtag is Tarot Shelf 2020. And uh, I think people just like seeing collection videos. And so that's probably why it's my number one. Um, I was thinking about redoing that uh, for 2022. I didn't do it last year, but my ch my collection has changed a lot since I made that video. So I've been thinking about redoing it. Um, if you're interested in that, if you want to see it, let me know, drop a comment and I'll put that together. Um, w is for weakness. And um, it's funny because this kind of ties into, you know, what upsets you the most. Um, I think one of my weaknesses is pride. Um, and it, that can tie into greed um, as well. Like I'm so great and I deserve everything, right? Um, but yeah, it's I've never really had a problem with low self-esteem. I don't, I don't. It's hard for me to imagine what that feels like. And it's not that I've I've never been embarrassed about something I've done. I certainly have, and I've messed up and felt bad about it. But on the whole, I've always thought that I was pretty okay, that I was pretty smart, that I often knew more than other people. Um, and that does get me into trouble. And I'm starting to realize that that's something that I need to work on. Um, X. X is for X-rated. And I debated what to say here because I know that family members watch this video and I know that uh, coworkers watch this video, actually. Um, but the prompt is X-rated, tell us something naughty you've done. So I will admit that I made out with someone in a parking garage that I barely knew who I'd met on the internet. Um, this was many, many years ago before my current partner. Um, I was, I don't know, I was single. I was trying out a bunch of different stuff and I didn't always make awesome decisions. Um, fortunately, it was, you know, that experience was fine. Um, it, no regrets, nothing bad happened, nothing dangerous happened, so it's all good. Um, why? Why is for yesteryear, uh, your favorite year so far, and why? And that's a little tricky for me. I don't have a great memory. And until recently, I haven't been journaling regularly. So I don't have a lot of like personal material I can look back on to um, stimulate my thinking on this. But uh, I can say with a lot of confidence that 2002 was an awesome year. Um, that's the year I met and married my partner. Um, it is the year that I got to uh, travel um, in Japan. It is the year that I switched jobs and started down a path that was more sustainable towards um, education. Uh, I didn't become a librarian then, but I took some steps in a direction that kind of led me to librarianship eventually. Um, it was a year of reevaluating myself and my priorities and making a lot of changes in my life for the better. And again, it just, it like, that's the point at at which you can look at your life and go, oh, I could have gone this way and had a totally different life, or I, I could have gone this way and had this life. And I'm really glad that I made the decisions that I did.
Um, Z uh, was another one that I wanted to rewrite and is the last prompt. So originally Z was for Zen. What do you do? Relax and stay calm. I get that the word Zen has been co-opted by popular culture to mean that. Um, thank you for the daily show, your moment of Zen. You know, you need to be more Zen. Why don't you go chill out and be Zen? Um, this thing makes me feel very Zen. Um, that's not what that means. And just talk to a Zen practitioner or read a Zen Buddhism book and you'll understand why. So um, I'm not going to answer that in that way. Um, I will change it to Zing. Uh, what lifts you up? Um, or, you know, helps you feel better. And for me, uh, it's really three things. Um, going for a walk, uh, doing something creative, so knitting, painting, writing in my journal, um, or uh, joking around with my partner. And um, he recently uh, mentioned to me that we should have like a joke book, not again, not a set up punchline, set up punchline kind of joke book, but like when we come up with funny stuff, to write it down to remember it because we kind of trade um, quips and witty puns and uh, we riff off each other really well. It's really amazing um, gift that we have in our relationship and I love it. So um, if I'm feeling down and we can get rolling on some jokes, um, you know, usually it's accidental. Like we're reacting to something we saw on the internet or something like that and we're making fun of it and then like it just spirals into total goofiness and, and I love that. That really lifts me up. So um, thank you again to Simon of the Hermit's Cave and to all of you who have done this um, tarot tubers A to Z prompt. Um, it's fun. I haven't watched all of them because there's many of them, but um, but there there have been some good ones. So I encourage you to check out the playlist. Again, I'll link that below, and just you know scroll. You can scroll through quickly and kind of eyeball and see if you recognize anyone whose um, channels you like to watch and see if they've done a response. Um, it's a great way to get to know people. And I want to end this video by asking you to leave me a question in the comments below. Like I said at the beginning, I would like to do a more in-depth Q&A, a personal Q&A, and answer your questions. So you can ask me anything you want. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean I'll answer everything if they're super personal, but um, I am game for any topics that you want to throw out there. So whether it's related to tarot and tarot reading, um, or if it's just other stuff you know, other stuff, personal preferences, creative questions, lifestyle stuff, whatever you want to get to know about me. Um, I'm certainly willing to share to the extent possible. And uh, I'm curious what, what you want to know about me. Um, so yeah, leave your questions below and I will be making that Q&A video probably sometime in January. Um, so in the not too distant future. Until then, uh, be well and take care and I'll see you very soon. Bye.